point. Ironically, Jackson has struggled lately. She had only two points in the loss at Connecticut on Saturday. Now for the Old Dominion Lady Monarchs, playing much better as of late. Their front line, Monique Coker, Corinna Turner, and Kim Giddens. And in the backcourt, Okisha Howard and Sharice Grant, who ironically, Grant and Howard were high school teammates at Princess Anne High School in Virginia Beach. Wendy Larry, the longtime head coach of the Lady Monarchs, National Coach of the Year back in 96 and 97, been very dominant in the Colonial Athletic Association. And of course, her counterpart tonight, perhaps the most successful women's coach of all time, Pat Summit. Just an incredible record. Already a member of the Basketball Hall of Fame for Pat Summit. Now in her 29th season in charge in Knoxville. Pat Summit has done an un unbelievable job. You know, when we talk about where their team is right now and where they start off, you know, they just came off their 13th Final Four appearance. But when they start their season, they talk about their 14th Final Four appearance. That's what they prepare for. And that's the intensity, the passion, you know, and the commitment by Pat Summit. Tonight's officiating crew. Kathy, a lot of times this game can be determined by how it is officiated, how close will they blow the whistle. There's Sally Bell, Susan Block, and Mark Zent will be the crew tonight. Well, you know, this is going to be interesting because both these teams are extremely athletic and extremely quick. So we're going to see this game go up and down, and we hope the refs let them play. Of course, the lone Lady Monarch victory in that mix we talked about six years ago tonight, January 6th. Make that January 7th of 1997. And then they didn't match up in the NCAA championship game in Cincinnati that year. And, and how about this crowd here tonight, John? The new tradition that Wendy Larry started on December 21st, she got on the mic and she asked the fans to start two new traditions. Sing loud and proud during the national anthem and stand up and cheer until the other team scores their first basket. Because the Lady Monarchs are a defensive minded team. Lady Vols to get first track at it. Lawson. They go down low. And the jumper off the mark. The rebound belongs to Kim Giddens for Old Dominion. And you're going to see a lot of that from the Lady Vols tonight. You're going to see them popping them from the perimeter. Tennessee. Playing a man-to-man -man defense. Coker has it for Old Dominion. Grant had it, but a violation against the Lady Monarchs. The turnover gives it back to the Lady Vols. Well, good strategy by Wendy Larry. She wanted to slow the ball down. She wants them to be consistent. She wants them to take it possession by possession. But you can't afford those little mistakes like the turnovers. The tempo will certainly be key, as you just mentioned, but I would think that Wendy Larry wants to score in the 50s, low 60s at the most. We'd love it, and, she, and, and I tell you what, John, they could do that because our team is playing the best defense they have played in years. Lawson on the right wing to Jackson. Now this is Buck. Baseline to Jackson. They're extending their defense out because they know how potent Tennessee is from the perimeter. And Lawson misfires. The rebound to Coker. Just over a minute gone by, no score. And you see Okisha Howard just putting her hand up there and, and calling the play, taking their time. They're spreading it out. They're working their offense. It's tight. possession by possession. The pull-up jumper is good for Howard. Boy, and that was a tough shot for Howard. That didn't come off very easy. And now a turnover by Tennessee. Loose ball picked up by Howard. Lady Monarchs want to go with it. It's Howard. And deep. A late whistle, but a two-shot foul coming up as Okisha Howard has a chance to give Old Dominion a 4-0 advantage. You've got to love that move by Okisha Howard against Lori Moore. We're going to see her right here. Watch Okisha Howard dribbling, going back and forth, hand-to-hand. She will watch a little hesitation, hesitation, ah, and attack. And Lori Morgan, what she, Lori Moore rather, what she did, number 21 from Tennessee, on the hesitation that we learn in camp, you know, hesitation, she stood up and bada-boom. What happened? Howard's going right to the basket. Howard connects on the first. Outstanding free throw shooter at 84%. Lady Monarchs as a team, not that good at 65%. The heart and soul of this Asian team, Akisha Howard. She's got four. The Lady Monarchs have four, and so far they're pitching a shutout. Oh, there you go. The half-court press by ODU. Our 
but the more her jumper from the foul line good so now the fans take a seat I'm sure Wendy wouldn't have mind that they would have stood up for, you know, 10, 15 minutes, I'm right? I'm sure she'd have had no problem with that at all. As Howard gets it on the right wing to Grant. Her jumper off the mark. Coker with the offensive rebound to Turner. Turner stepped on the baseline. Actually, they say the pass was picked off, but the Tennessee player Butts was on the baseline. So the Lady Monarchs will keep it at their end. Like to score out of out of bounds plays. This is Howard. She will shoot three, but she needs quite a bit of space, being only five five. And there's only two people on on the OU team that really shoot three consistently, and that's uh, Spence and Howard. Coker had the shot partially blocked by Butts, and it, once again it'll be Lady Monarchs ball with 11 on the shot clock. And, and when he's yelling on the sideline, shot clock. 11 seconds on the shot clock. Grant gets it into Turner. Coming off a couple of oh. She makes a nice move for the score. Big basket by double zero, six foot six, Serena Turner. And boy, she has done a tremendous job. She had lost, lost 22 pounds since the beginning of the season. The jumper no good. The rebound tipped out front where Lawson recovers it. And now they'll reset with a fresh shot clock. Nice backdoor cut by Lawson and a good feed for Moore. <laughs> Lady Monarchs will try to answer, still up by a bucket. Think about Turner, she's missed the last two years with, with knee injuries and she's really had to work to get back in shape and, and not just from a weight standpoint, but also from the injured knee. No, absolutely, endurance-wise, but she, when she was out, she gained around 30 pounds, lost around 22, and you can see her mobility. I can see the difference in the game when they played all the time at the beginning of the season to where they are right now. This is Lawson again. They work the baseline. The jumper from Butts is good, and we're tied. See, and this is what happens in Tennessee. They, they are such excellent perimeter shooters that they'll dive you inside, and then they'll kick it out. So Keisha Howard being deliberate on the perimeter, working the offense. Grant wanted to go to Coker with it, but they stepped in the passing line, and now Grant has it poked away. Howard can't recover. Up to four to more. Howard breaks up the play, and it'll be Tennessee basketball, but it saved the bucket. Good hustle by Lakeisha Howard. What happens is that she, Grant shows the ball, now she shows the ball, Gwen Jackson gets her hand on it, passes up ahead to Lori Moore, presence of the mind of Howard to steal the ball back. The inbound to Lawson, and deep to Robinson, off the glass, no good, and a foul inside is going to go against Mashiri, who's just checked in the Old Dominion lineup. You see, and this is why, Karina, double zero on your screen right there, why Turner is so important to this ODU lineup against a team like ODU. Timeout on the floor. We'll come back. All locked up at six right after this. Tonight's game. Back, John Castleberry along with Kathy Andrewsy. Early stages of the first half. The RPI report, we hear so much about it, Kathy. Uh, there you see it. Tennessee number two. You look at Old Dominion's record, they're four and four. How in the world are they 22nd RPI? Well, 22nd RPI, what we don't see on that screen there is Old Dominion is number two in strength of schedule, and Texas is number one in strength of schedule. And that's because Old Dominion goes down and plays teams like Duke, number one in the country, you know, and Arkansas, Virginia was ranked when they played them in the beginning of the, of the season. They have a very, very tough non-conference schedule. Lady Vols looking for their first lead of the evening. Lawson gets a pick. Good help from Coker. And this is going to be interesting for Old Dominion right now because in the game is Dacinco, number one, who just got the rebound in for Turner. So now ODU comes out with a small lineup. Now, now this means that Tennessee's out there with the big guns. Let's see, let's see how these matchups really work out. Now Cingo has it. Well, she's another young lady who missed last year with a knee injury. And she's just now coming into form a little bit. Playing what? much better than what she was a month ago. And, the, and that's what she brings to the table right there, which you just saw. The speed and athleticism. The jumper, no good from Mashiri. Tennessee, another chance at his first lead of the game. Old Dominion needs 
needs to get Tennessee just one shot at the basket. They want to keep them off the offensive board. A I whistle. Think, I think it was on Ashley Robinson going against Coker. And Coker has her hands full, number 20, 23 for Old Dominion. You know, if it was a foul or a three-second violation, but either way, it's Lady Monarch basketball. Three seconds was the call. The three seconds, I thought, they were, I thought that they might have done that on uh, Ashley Robinson. Loose ball recovered by Max Masinga, and the jumper by Grant, no good. So both teams going cold here. Tennessee missed its first couple of shots, then they hit three of their next five. She has to Robinson down low, getting a really, she gets, she's getting to see what happens. When Coco plays behind her, she posts up real, real, gets it, turns around, and pops, pops it. She's got those long arms, too, which she can create even more space due to that. Yeah, they might want to front there just to see what, uh, how, how much they can get out of her, but the staying behind Ashley Robinson with that height disadvantage and her mobility is really going to hurt OGU. And the long three from Akisha Howard puts Old Dominion back on track. That's her 14th three-pointer of the year. And that's what Akisha Howard does best. Excellent from beyond the off. Another backdoor cut lost an interior pass to Robinson for an easy score. Robinson, number 33, for Tennessee is such a tough play. It's so mobile for her side. And that's going to really hurt Tennessee. And, and on her right now uh, is another uh, another substitution. Paula Mosheri. Mosheri's so got it in five, lost it. She runs it down. Shot clock down to seven. See, that's not Mosheri's shot, though, John. That's not Mosheri's shot, but plus it was to the time clock uh, situation. It'll be Lady Ball's ball. Kim Giddens returns into the Old Dominion lineup. And you know what you're going to see here? You're going to see Wendy Larry go to her bench and trying to find the combination that can stop Tennessee. You'll see them running in and out. And right now, Mary number four, Mary, uh, uh, Mariah, Spence, Mariah yeah. Spence is in. And she's in there too, John, because she's, she's one of the better perimeter shooters on this team. One of their few threats from beyond the arc. First, they have to play some defense. Well, an old has been playing some really great defense this year. Well, offensively is where they're hurting. And but on the roll, once again, Jackson scores. That's what happens when you play behind Tennessee players and you have that height disadvantage. And already, all five Tennessee starters have scored. Only two Old Dominion players have scored. And it'll be Lady Vol's ball. Is not going to argue that call. But when he <laughs> Talk about a contrast. Point guard bringing up Lori Moore. What a uh, what an athlete she is. Just a sophomore. Jackson, top of the key. Too strong. Long rebound. Comes off to Mosheri and she got fouled. Only the second team foul, first team foul on Gwen Jackson. And that, this just makes Tennessee so dangerous. That big woman can step outside and, 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 and shoot threes. Good handle by Musheri. You know, Musheri, when you look at this ODU lineup, they're so athletic, they're so quick. They get their hands in the passing lane. Tennessee needs to be aware of that. Give me the Turner. Through that starting front line for Old Dominion back in the line. They try to go inside again. Her turnaround jump is good, and she made that look easy. Well, you know, Giddens has been a real big spot on this team. They need her in there for her leadership and also her rebounding. Butts misfired. There was a scramble in the corner. It's going to stay with Tennessee. Always keeping the ball alive. Hands. Jackson getting a hand on the ball, but at the very end, it's Nasinko. Robinson has it. Check that. Now it's Butts. Earlier it was Jackson. Now Robinson's got it. He's long on his baseline jumper. This time Nasinko comes up with it. He gets it to Howard. Inside to Spence. 
And the score, great recognition from Howard to find the open Lady Monarch. Well, after excellent transition by, by O'Dominion, love to have Spence down in that spot up area and just stepping up at the right time and uses the glass nicely. Lady Monarch back on top. Nice spin move by Moore. He won't go, though. Turner got a hand on it and a foul going against Butts for Tennessee. That'll be her first and the third team foul as we take a look at Okisha Howard with a great floor recognition to get the easy score. And have regained the lead on the strength of this fast break. The classic fast break, Masico number one, passes to Howard. Howard immediately picks up, uh, looks right ahead, and then Spence very quietly came, comes up from the baseline to receive the ball, uses the glass. Classic fast break. Coach Wendy Larry has to love that. I think she's got to be very pleased with the pace of this game so far. And, you know, the longer she stays in it, the more the crowd can get involved and the more the team believes that they can actually hang with this Tennessee ball club. No question about that. No question. You can't give Tennessee double shots at the basket and they're preventing that second shot. That's very, very important. Fantastic. Oh, do you do a very nice job offensively spreading out the offense, looking for individual one-on-one -on -one opportunities because that's how they score the best. You see that? Shot clock down to three. Howard forces the three. Too strong. Spence kept it alive. Not One down by Nasingo, and she got fouled from behind. I believe it was Butts who pushed her. And what Tennessee is doing right now is they're making silly, silly fouls. Silly fouls. That's number two on Butts. Fourth team foul. We still got 11 minutes to go in this half. Therese Grant checks back in the Lady Monarch lineup for Mariah Spence. And Zolman, the outstanding shooter for Tennessee, checks in. Just a freshman. Miss Indiana. Trouble getting it inbounds, and they throw it off Zolman. Fortunately, it did not bounce off of the Lady Monarch, who was out of bounds. So it'll stay with Old Dominion. Nasinko, smart play by Nasinko. This time they get it into Howard. See what Old Dominion's doing right now, spreading out the defense, running some isolation plays. Sharice Grant puts it on the floor. Pull-up jumper from 14 won't go, but they get the third <laughs> shot. Gibbs is at it. Jump ball, possession arrow Giddens. will keep it at the Old Dominion end. You know, John, you got to love Giddens. Giddens did not start number 40 from Old Dominion. She did not start in the beginning of the season. She's a senior. But look at the effort she gives you on the offensive glass. From she comes right, right. Well, we just missed it, but I tell you what, it was a great effort. Howard on the inbound gets fouled. Fouls going against Lori Moore. That's her second. This script at this point could not play out any better for Old Dominion as it is right now. Especially with an 84% free throw shooter at the line for two more. A little strong on that one. Her first miss of the night. And what this has given Wendy Larry an opportunity is to, to get some gals in and out of the lineup. Now you see back is double zero. Uh, Turner, giving her a little blow on the side, you know, letting her rest a little bit, bringing her back in so she can go against the big gal from uh, Tennessee. Brittany Jackson also in the lineup. Sophomore. Tennessee. Lady and then it's the ODU. 2-2-1, two, two, three-quarter court press. And they will trap on the sideline. Zolman has it. Gets it across the timeline. This is Jackson. What a mismatch. Six-footer Jackson, but Howard almost took it away from her, but Akisha gets called for the foul. At 5-5, five, five, that's a tough matchup for her. That's that, well, it's a tough matchup down the line with most of these players here. Her first personal foul. Only the second team foul against Old Dominion. They've already whistled six against the Lady Vols, or five against the Lady Vols. foul away from the ball against Monique Coker for Old Dominion. How quickly things are evening up. Yeah, and those those are the kind of fouls that uh, that oh, Old Dominion doesn't want to make. 
Inside to Eli. Eli. Oh, blocked by Giddens. That's what her fourth day. Big block. Back door to Jackson who scores. Yeah, and then and then they come right back and they run their plays. But Giddens, big block by Giddens, and Giddens led Old Dominion and blocks for 44 last season. Comes back this year and they expect a lot out of her also. And three times tonight, the Lady Vols have utilized the back door play. Coker's baseline jumper missed everything, and Lawson has it for Tennessee. Up the floor and an easy score. Well, I tell you what, you know when you when you look at number 43. Uh, Sarah, uh, Eli, she did such a great job in the, in the Connecticut game, coming off the bench for 30, 31 minutes, scoring eight points out of six rebounds. She is unbelievable athlete. Zolman's three won't go. Giddens, another rebound for Old Dominion. Now Howard, nice hesitation. Got cut off, so she spins and brings it back out front. Coker fake. Travel with it. Lawana Davis checks into the lane lineup lineup for Keisha Howard. Lawana Davis into the Old Dominion lineup to replace Keisha Howard. She won't be out long. No, not at all. She just needs to get a little rest. But uh, yeah, you look at this lineup for Old Dominion right now. What a another just a, a quick, quick lineup on the wing. The field goal percentages. Tennessee has heated up considerably. Another backdoor play to Zolman. But, but Nasinka wasn't going to let her get anything. Quick move by Nasinka. Oh! Robinson, that time Turner came Turner. up to the defensive play. Grant to Davis. Missed the shot from point blank range, and Tennessee's got another board. You know, and Davis, number three from Old Dominion, is only a freshman. And the roll for Lawson. Lady Balls have their biggest lead of the game. Lawson's got four. This is Grant back out front. Back court will give it to Tennessee. Those are the little turnovers that Wendy Larry right there just doesn't want. You need to, you need to honor your possessions. You must honor the possessions. So between the, the turnovers and the miss from point blank range down there, you've got to make sure you take care of those situations against a team of the quality of Tennessee. Another backdoor cut and another score. Jackson's got four points and a little bit more than a minute's worth of work. Well, you know, Jackson wants back in the starting lineup. She was started the first five games of the season, got injured, had a medial collateral ligament injury on December 1st. The sideline uh, for several games uh, has come back sparingly, but would love to crack back that starting lineup. And I asked Pat some of that today. When does uh, Brittany Jackson get back to that starting lineup? And she says when she takes it away from Buck. Lady Monarch starts within four and another easy bucket. Eli again. Well, this is this is what you call experience. The experience of Tennessee, the athleticism of Tennessee, really showing right now. Now Singo has it rolled a minute. To Davis. Inside to Giddens. Eli with the foul. Two shots coming up for Kim Giddens. Who's only a 63% free throw shooter. She has been Kim Goodness, number 40 on the line for Old Dominion, has been a spark off the court. She is the gal that keeps the team together. To speak with Wendy Larry earlier today, she says she just is so important for this team. She had an excellent preseason. Her third point of the game is... A couple of starters back in the lineup. Jackson replaces Robinson for Tennessee, and Akeisha Howard checks back in for the Lady Monarchs. Mashuri back in for Old Dominion as Corinna Turner will take a seat again. Stamina will certainly be an issue for her, and they'll want her down the stretch. As Giddens hits again. So Giddens has four. The Lady Volunteers lead is four. We're back with more right after this.
in the last three and a half minutes is one of the big reasons why the backdoor cut. Well, it's all about timing, and there you saw, you saw Brittany Jackson with the backdoor cut. Timing, timing, timing. Uh, Zoman with the ball, number five on the top of your screen, and the slide through by Eli on the bottom left. Zoman, number five from Indiana, Miss Indiana. There are two Miss Indianas on this team for this Tennessee Lady Vols. They, uh, they just recruit all, all Americans after all Americans after all Americans. They miss somebody from somebody's state, aren't from they, John? California, <laughs> Texas, Georgia, <laughs> and Tennessee, of course. Oh! Big block that time by Miss Sherry. She takes the oh! ball. Oh! That'll get the crowd back in it. I tell you what. The woman from, from Angola, the sophomore, 6 1 at the clear blue sky. You gotta love it. And she finished it to bring Old Dominion back within a bucket. Oh, the crowd loves that. Lawson, played by Nasinga, uses a pick. Uh -huh. Move. I tell you what, and, and there, Carol Lawson, the Virginia native. She's got from, six. I tell you what, from West Springfield, her dad is in the crowd watching her today. Akeisha Howard leads all scores in the game with eight. Oh. Nasinga with a oh. shot off the glass. Nasinga! You, you know, when you think about Nasinga, junior college player of the year, she played with Clarice Marchinguana back in the same hometown. The gal has jumped, she has ups, and she has speed. The bounce pass broken up, recovered by Howard. Old Dominion with a chance to tie it or perhaps take the lead. Howard. Oh, that's a little off shot. That was real strong. Foul's going against Old Dominion. It might be Howard. See, that's what Howard, as the presence of mind, what Howard needs to do. She's coming down. You know, this, this defense is down there ready. You need to pull that ball back out. Now work that position. Work for a good shot. But that's what happens, John, when you get that momentum. You know, you feel the energy, and you think you can come down there and, and pop one. That's her second personal foul. Wendy Larry certainly has got to be concerned about that. The fourth team foul against Old Dominion. Wendy Larry, what a great job she's done here at Old Dominion. What an outstanding recruiter. And she owns Europe, I think. I mean, we know she owns Europe, you know? Because you never hear about these gals, and then all of a sudden you come watch them play, and you go, oh my goodness, where'd she come from? Lawson for three. She's starting to heat up. She's got nine points. Lady Vols go up by five. They've led by as many as six a couple of times, and of course, Old Dominion led early 4 0. Howard, nice crossover. Nasinga on the baseline. Well, Old Dominion's doing a great job plotting it up inside. This is Giddens. Fade away, no good. Rebound. Comes Brittany off. Jackson. And now Fowles going against Mascheri. And that's another kind of a central foul, really. That was a very central foul. Yeah, well, well, clearly, Brittany, Brittany Jackson worked real hard to get that get that rebound, and Musheri went right into her. First second, so she's got two. Howard has two, and she's going to the bench as Coker will come back into the Old Dominion lineup. You gotta love the atmosphere in this game. You know, two two teams with such rich tradition in women's basketball dating back to the AIAW days. But they play every year, even though they're you know, a long way away in terms of conferences. Southeastern, of course, for Tennessee and the Colonial Athletic Association for Old Dominion. Well, you know, I spoke to Debbie Jennings earlier, the SID from Tennessee, and she says, you know, people think that Connecticut and, and Tennessee is the big the big match, the big rivalry. She says, no, no, no. It's it's the the, the Tennessees and the Old Dominions. That is the true rivalry, the true tradition. Nasingo tries to answer for Old Dominion. Now down by seven. Oh. She missed the shot, but she'll go to the line foul. for a pair. Jackson got her. Brittany Jackson. We've got two Jacksons in the lineup now with Gwen and Brittany on the floor at the same time. Don't foul the jump shooter. That's the seventh team foul as well against the Lady Vols. Yeah, Nasinko has come along so far since the beginning of the season. She has such great quickness that her her body was moving faster than her mind. She wasn't used to she wasn't used to the fundamental system 
here in Division One college because in, in Juco, you know, every, like when he says, any time she got her hand on the ball, it was her shot. Okay, I got the ball shot. She had so a blank check. She had a blank check, and, and so Wendy had to take away that checkbook when uh, when she got hit at Old Dominion. And that would take some adjustment, I would imagine. She hits two from the line. She's got four points. Lady Vile still lead by five, though. And Lawson's kind of taking over, as you can see. Calling the shots and making the shots that she's taking. Well, and that's her specialty. That's what she does for this ball club. Eli and Dean oh. forced it. Rebound comes off to Latoya Davis, who's in. And the banker in oh, by Fluka. Fluka, what a big woman. 6'5". Taisha Fluka from Pasadena, California. Boy, she just keeps coming. It doesn't matter how deep she goes into the bench. She's yeah. got quality players. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and Taisha has played in, in 11 games. Uh, she's such a big body, one of the most highly recruited players recruited last year, a, a, a parade or American. She didn't play in the Connecticut game. She committed the foul. That was her first, but it's also 18 fouls, so it'll be a one and one for Kim Giddens. The lead seven for Tennessee. Giddens too long, and the rebound to Tennessee. Lawson. She threaded that one, didn't well, she, she really to Davis? Did. Lawson's got it back. Down low to Fluker. Out of bounds off of Grant. It'll be Lady Vile's ball. Tennessee starting to pull away a little bit as we head down the stretch of the first half. Back after this. Really? Starting to pull away, and one of the reasons why is Carol Lawson. She's coming on strong. You know, she does it all for Tennessee. Uh, just such an inspirational leader. This is this gal, you know, from Alexandria, Alexandria, Virginia, uh, was the player of the year uh, came back this this past summer served as the team captain of the gold medal world university games that team played in beijing china and she led the team in assist steals free throws and three pointers she throws it in bounds to eli fluker for the davis passes oh. three. almost went but giddens has the board for old dominion you know, Fluker on the air, that might that might seem kind of funny at 6'5", but Fluker on the air is 2 for 5 from beyond the off. Most coaches would take 40% from three, and there's a traveling violation against the Lady Monarch, Kim Giddens. And that's what makes this Tennessee team so dangerous, because they could all shoot beyond the off. But you know what's happened so far tonight? This may just be a coincidence, I would imagine so, but Lady Monarchs have shot nine free throws, and Lady Vols have yet to shoot a foul shot tonight. We played almost 17 minutes. Davis puts it on the floor, and now she's going to shoot two. So there you go. <laughs> Never fails. There you go. You gave, you gave him a couple of free throws there, John. Foul's going against Cocovino for Old Dominion. And this is what I love about Old Dominion's team and, and just trying to prepare for this game and, is... Because when he goes all over to get players, the uh, the last names are, are are the best, like Cuckoo Vino. So I said to Wendy, Wendy, do you, you say Cuckoo Vino all the time? I said, I call her Cuckoo. I said, well, well, Wendy, I, I can't, you can't call her Cuckoo on, on, on air. But that, that's Wendy Larry. She has a great sense of humor. Uh, and we can go back to some, some interesting names. Clarice Machinguana. Machinguana. Tisha Pinachero. Pinachero. Mm -hmm. The list goes on and on as Davis hits again. And, you know, Kukovino is uh, from Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, and um, she was born in Sweden, has a Polish mother and a Greek father. So go figure. Okay, <laughs> go figure. I, I, I can't figure that one. but Tennessee's played... Ten players in the game so far. Nine of them have already scored. So excellent balance by the Lady Vols, and Old Dominion throws it uh, away. Boy, throw it away from that three-quarter press that Tennessee put on. Ah, uh, there's McDaniel. And now she scored. They're going to count the basket. A chance for a three-point play. But once again, Lawson with the recognition and threading the needle. Oh, you know, that's why when you talk about leadership, you talk about a floor leader. Uh, you know, 
always, always heads up, gets the ball. Well, you see what as a point guard, she turns around, sees Courtney McDaniel down the court. McDaniel, good grab on the ball, holds on to it, gets the foul, goes up. Missed the shot. Old Dominion with the rebound. Uh, 11 point lead. Both coaches going deep to their bench. Tennessee played everybody, I believe. Old Dominion very close to doing just that as well. Yeah. Coker lost it. But you see where you see where Old Dominion really has the problem, and that's offensively. Offensively, because they don't have the perimeter weapons that just say Tennessee has. You know, they're excellent off the dribble, they're excellent, you know, getting getting through the hoop, but when, when you have a team packing in, that's where they struggle. That's why they're trying to break Tennessee out. Another three for loss, and this one won't go. Rebound foul going against Tennessee. Well, Lawson almost had that shot. She moved away from her shot. She was right on the money, right on the money. Davis, that's her first. Fouls on Latoya Davis, her first. And we'll have free throws at the other end. That's nine team fouls. The Old Dominion trying to cut into what right now is an 11 point advantage, which is the biggest lead of the game for Tennessee. And it's so important right now for ODU to take these next two minutes and really hold Tennessee. Don't let them get on the, on, on the run. Nine points for Akeisha Howard, five foot, five inches. From Princess Anne High School in Virginia Beach. She's got an even 10. And she's a preseason CAA player of the year. Davis for Tennessee. There you go to and Karen wants that ball, doesn't she? She, she right wants down. that ball. She wants to be in charge. Oh, uh, that was a good double team down low. Kim Giddens right on the left hand side of Fluka. Get it down that ball. To Giddens down the lane. Won't go. Rebound. Comes off. Tennessee on the move again. 3 on 1. Uh oh. Nice pass to Davis. Classic 3 on 1 fast break. Very unselfish. The lead back to 11. Oh, uh, nice move by Turner. It'll be Old Dominion basketball. But see what happens to Turner. Turner gets that ball, but once again, when she turns, she doesn't protect the ball. Watch this. She gets good position, works real hard, give her the ball. But she turns, and what does she do? She shows the ball to Eli. You cannot show the ball. you got to protect it. Lawson show them your the, body. Let them foul you. Lawson with the acrobatic save. Again, pushing up the floor to Davis. And you know Corina Turner. She wanted a piece of that, didn't she? Absolutely. She wanted a piece of that. Old Dominion ball. Minute 22 to play. All now six, Tennessee six full court pressure. They come up with it. Lawson with a score. Lawson having a big night. 11 points. Old Dominion, no field goals in the last five minutes. Giddens inside. Her pass taken away. Now Spence has it for Old Dominion. Into Grant. It won't go, but a couple of free throws coming up for Sharice Grant. You know, Tennessee, they just take it up another notch. They take it up a different level, and they do it all of a sudden. McDaniel, number 34. She's played in all 12 Tennessee games. Tough competitors. 6 1 from Bristol, Tennessee. Grant connects on the first. Her first point of the game. And OG, and, and Wendy Brown Lowry really loves Sheree Grant. I mean, CAA all rookie team last year. Only a sophomore. Play with O'Keisha Howard, Howard at Princess Anne High School. She missed the second. Fluker has it for Tennessee. Lawson lost it out of bounds. An unforced error by the Lady Vols. Well, that's Fluka. Fluka on the wing, number 50, freshman. You need to step to the ball. Step to the ball to receive the ball, and she stepped away from the ball. 30 second timeout. Might as well use it. Can't got, take it with you to the second Can't take it with half. you. You got four 30 second timeouts. You can bring three over to the next half. 
but you gotta blow one. That's what they're doing right now. You know, you gotta when, when you when you when you look at at the score, look at what OGU is doing against a team like Tennessee. I mean, when Larry goes back into the to the locker room at halftime, it has to be very pleased with some of the things that her team has done. Turnovers. Certainly not something that she's pleased with. You look at that, that's really the difference in the ball game right now. They're nine compared to only five for the Lady Vols. And, and you know, the Lady Vols average 17 turnovers a game. And they, they have five right now. So Pat Summon has to be pleased with that number. 35 seconds left in the half, so the Lady Monarchs can't take it all the way down. And Tennessee shows zone for the first yep. time tonight. Three, two zone. They've got some of the bigger people out of out front on the zone to make it tough for Howard to get off the three. But she does anyway. Missed it. Oh, kept it alive. And Grant kept it alive. Davis has it for the Lady Ball. And now it's Pat Summit's turn to use the 30-second timeout. Can't take it with you. That's right. Might as well use it. Oh, 13 seconds. 12-point lead. Uh, points in the paint. Tennessee very much having its way. Well, you know, and they should have their way. They got they got some mighty, mighty fine big post players inside. And that's going to be the challenge when Old Dominion comes back, is that how, how do we stop those baskets? But, you know, and, and that means tightening up. That means, uh, you know, putting more pressure on them, uh, getting everybody in now, and, and not making those mistakes. Would a zone work against Tennessee? Oh, zone, yeah, zone work against Tennessee, they'll pop you all over. That, that's the hard part about Tennessee. If you're going to play them zone, then you got to contend with their outstanding outside shooting. We haven't seen Zolman much tonight. She hasn't hit when she's been in there, but you know she could. She could. Carol Lawson can. Brittany Jackson can. And we see a zone for all the men, you know, one, three, one. Or is it? Uh, well, start it as a 1-3 one, three zone, 1-3-1, one, one, then, then get it popped out. One second left. Flipper uh, won't get the shot off. And Pat Summit, she couldn't have wanted that at that time. Well, I think it was good strategy by Old Dominion. They come out in a zone. Old Dominion, uh, Tennessee comes out, didn't recognize it right away, uh, and got flustered. Still, Tennessee by 12 at the half. We'll take a break, come back with our halftime activity right after this. Your Summit Show, every Monday night at 6.30 Eastern, 5.30 Central. Tune in for my show on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Time in Norfolk, Virginia, where the Tennessee Lady Vols on top of the Old Dominion Lady Monarchs by a 12 point margin. Early on, Old Dominion was able to take a quick 4 0 advantage, but the Lady Vols used a lot of depth from their bench, and right now they're pretty much in charge of this basketball game, leading by 12 points. And Old Dominion has joined a lot of success over the years in a lot of sports, but in particular, their women's sports. Obviously, basketball has been one of their keys. Uh, their sailing program has been outstanding. The soccer program has been on the move as of late, as well as women's lacrosse. But one thing that's always been a mainstay for this Old Dominion University athletic program for the women has been the field hockey program under the direction of longtime head coach Beth Anders. They've had another tremendous season this past year, and one of the key reasons for that season was the play of one of their standouts, Tiffany Snow. On December 9, 2002, Old Dominion's Tiffany Snow was named a Honda Award winner an annual award given to the nation's top collegiate field hockey player. A senior midfielder, Snow is tied for second in the nation in points, second in the country in goals scored, and 11th in the nation in assists. Defensively, she led the Lady Monarchs to six shutouts and recorded a team-best three defensive saves. Snow led Old Dominion in scoring on six occasions, tallied four game-winning goals, and recorded a hat trick five times. The Honda Award also adds to an already impressive list of honors and awards bestowed upon Tiffany this season. She earned her second First Team All-America and First Team All-South Region honors in November. She was also named the Colonial Athletic Association Player of the Year and CAA Tournament MVP after guiding the Lady Monarchs to their seventh straight and 11th overall conference title. 
Tiffany also earned NCAA All-Tournament honors after helping the Lady Monarchs to their 22nd straight NCAA tournament berth and their 15th appearance in the Final Four. The 2002 version of the Lady Monarch field hockey team finished the year with a 21-4 overall record and a perfect 7-0 mark in CAA play. Old Dominion concluded the year with a number one ranking in the coaches poll and reached the semifinals of the NCAA tournament. Tiffany becomes the sixth Lady Monarch to be honored with the Honda Award. She joins former Old Dominion Award winners Yolanda Hightower, Christy Morgan, Kelly James, Mimi Smith, and Marina DiGiacomo. The Lady Monarchs hold the distinction of having produced the most Honda Award winners in the sport of field hockey. So another outstanding field hockey campaign here at Old Dominion University. And again, longtime head coach Beth Anders has done a tremendous job with that program, and she's put out a lot of tremendous players like Tiffany Snow. Let's take a break right now. Halftime continues in Norfolk, Virginia, with the Lady Vols of Tennessee leading by 12 over Old Dominion. <laughs> Step up to a wardrobe suited for style. Tennessee's own Men of Measure Big and Tall Clothiers has over 70 famous maker lines. Felt like it could be like this. Obviously a Tennessee ball club that's very talented. Old Dominion much younger, and, and quite frankly, I think they played pretty well. Still, they find themselves down by an even dozen points. Yeah, they, they do, and Tennessee just stepped up a notch, you know, at the end at the end of the first half. But, you know, Tennessee's shooting very well. Tennessee's shooting 50%, you know, from the field, whereas, you know, Old Dominion is, is in the 30s, and that, that really makes a big difference, but the rebound seems to be even. But you got to give Old Dominion a lot of credit for coming out and, and really working hard and, and looking at and looking at certain areas in the game where they need to they need to come back in the second half and really put it put a uh, uh, just step it up into the notch. They did get off to a quick start. In fact, Lady Monarchs jumped out to a quick four nothing lead, which really got the crowd involved. You know, it, it, well, here you have Howard. You know, that's where she is very potent from the outside. They need to get more outside shots, but, and then a, a really nice shot by Spence, you know, down low. How about the Sherry? You gotta love number two with the block and taking it all the way down to the transition. And then from Tennessee, well, you know, we, we, we can we can talk about a lot of different players because they're all there. But then you have Eli, who's coming off a great game against Connecticut with that back door. And then Carol Lawson, so she can drive to the hoop, and there's her hesitation, goes right through, loves to go to the hole. But then again, that's not all she does. She's one of the best three-point shooters in the country. 43% from the three-point line. You can see right there, she just steps back and takes it right in. So, you know, Tennessee has a lot of guns to go to. And when you look at the stats, 33% from Old Dominion. That's where they need to improve. Rebounds pretty even. They are. I think Old Dominion is doing a real good job on the glass. And you see Tennessee's only been to the line three times. But turnovers have got to be key. And then if you look at the points in the paint. Yeah, point, points in the paint. You know, 22 points in the paint. You know, that's, that's where Old Dominion needs to look at and put some more pressure on the big girls inside. If you're Wendy Larry, how do you get your ball club back in this game? Well, I think it's ball back, back in the game, but you're looking, you're saying, hey, listen, I have a young ball club. I'm playing the number five team in the country. I gotta make, we got to make shots now. We got, we're getting on the line, but now when we get inside, we got to make shots, and we got to prevent those backdoor plays and put a little muscle in there. Come out real strong. We'll see what happens. Stay with us. Back with more right after this. CSS is your source for college basketball in the Southeast. Wednesday night, watch as TCU play Southern Miss at 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central. Then stay tuned for Wisconsin at Michigan. Halftime continues here in the campus of Old Dominion University. Tennessee on top of the Lady Monarchs by a 12-point margin at the half. Uh, welcome back, John Castleberry, along with Kathy Andrews, and a special guest, former Old Dominion All-American, an Olympian, a Hall of Famer, Ann Donovan. And Kathy, if you could have recruited Ann Donovan when you were at East Carolina, you'd still be coaching today. Heck, we are playing against them. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we had a great rivalry, we didn't we, back we then? We did. East Carolina and That's Old Dominion right. had a great rivalry. But, you know, we didn't, we didn't like guarding you, Ann. I tell you that right now. Yeah. We did not like guarding you. But, hey, listen, first of all, congratulations. You're a new coach of the Seattle Storm. Thank you. Real excited about the position. Oh, you got some players on yes, that team. Yes, you named Sue Bird and Lauren Jackson to start, so what coach wouldn't be excited oh, about that? I tell you what, but how about this new place? How about they call it the Ted? 
the Ted. Yeah. That's big. That's big hall right here. You know, it's the first time in the building for me, and I've heard a lot about it, not just from Old Dominion folks, but from opponents that have come in, and it's just really special, really yeah. special. Yeah, you know, and, and it's so fitting that you're here at this game today, because when we talk about rivalries, we talk about great tradition in women's basketball, you know, we talk about Ann Donovan as being one of the leaders, one of the pioneers. We talk about Old Dominion and Tennessee. You know, and you're here at this game, so it's... it's well, I tell you, the Old Dominion Tennessee rivalry goes back so far, and it is so special to me. I always look for this game on the schedule, whether it's in Knoxville or whether it's in Norfolk, and this is the game I like to be at because of all the memories it brings for me. Yeah. Now, what do you think about your Old Dominion team? Oh, they're playing very well. Last time I saw them, they didn't play so well at Carolina, so it's nice to see them really compete hard. Should be a very good second half. A lot of players coming in and contributing. Yeah, they really improved from the Carolina game, though. They, they, they look like they're improving every single game. You know, I don't know if it's because they're at home or just because they've gotten better, but they're so much more Confident. There's no fear at all tonight. There's no hesitancy. And every player is taking it right at Tennessee. Yeah. How do you, what do you think about Tennessee? Tennessee's solid, top to bottom. You know, and they, they look more focused. Tough game, tough loss against Connecticut. But this is a very good team, top to bottom. They'll be there on the end. Yeah. Any players you see out there that might be of help to you in the WNBA? Oh, I see three or four. I wouldn't mind having up <laughs> Seattle. One by the name of Lawson wouldn't fit in too uh, bad. I tell you, she's special, isn't she? Yeah. You haven't seen anyone pass the ball the way she does. She's pretty she's tough. She's the floor so well. And you can tell she demands the ball and she knows what to do with it when she gets it. Yeah, crunch time. She wants the ball. Sign of a winner. No question about that. And how does it feel when you walk into this arena and you walk into the concourse area and see what a beautiful job they did with the tradition of Old Dominion going back to the AIAW days and you walk in here and see... Yeah. Uh, See your jersey hanging up. You know, it's special to me for all those reasons because it really showcases the history of the women's basketball. What else it does here is it showcases all the other coaches and all the other sports that have been a part of the tradition of athletics at Old Dominion. So they've taken women's basketball, and that's, you know, the, probably our pride, our biggest pride here, but they've taken the other coaches in the sports, and they've made them a part of a very fine building that the whole university is proud of. Well, Ann, good to see you again. Thanks for coming by. Enjoy the second half. Thanks for having me. I plan on it. Thank you. Ann Donovan, the Hall of Famer. All-American and Old Dominion, of course, a big part of those great Lady Monarchs teams back in the, the late 70s and early 80s under then Mary Ann Stanley. That's right. One of the greatest. Thanks, Dan. See the scoring leader. We were talking about Lawson. She had 11 to lead the Lady Vols. And, of course, for Old Dominion, Akeisha Howard, the only player in double figures. You know, it's so great having Ann Donovan come visit us because when you talk about the tradition of women's basketball when you talk about AIAW days and people forget about the AIAW days you know uh, and what a big factor in was in women's basketball both nationally and internationally and her banner hanging up number 22 she's uh, just a, a class act all the way always has been holds ODU record for most points scored over 2,700 and still holds that record and the rebounding record and the block shot, 801. And you know she's bought some shots, oh, yeah. guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tennessee with the lead in the basketball as we start the second half and Turner gets called for a foul as once again they tried to attack in the paint. First on Turner, obviously the first team foul here with just 13 seconds gone by in the second half. Tennessee starting the same five that started the ball game. And ODU in a play-to-play -play defense. More hit. Oh boy, that was so smooth. That was like butter. Did she just step right back out there and just if they're going to hit those, the Lady Monarchs are going to have an awfully tough time getting back in this uh, game. They're now down by 15. You know, they got to extend the defense. ODU is quick enough where they can they can prevent the drive with their quickness, with their drop step. They switch on defense. Well, Howard couldn't get the shot off. Didn't can, but doesn't get the roll. So that, that's what's going to kill the Lady Monarchs, is that when they get a shot like that, an open shot from the 10 foot, from the 40 Giddens, you got to make that. You got to nail those shots. Uh, You're not going to get too many of those. Now, Singa back in the Old Dominion lineup. Akeisha Howard to the bench, not even a minute into the second half. Wendy Larry, not happy about something. Well, she's a four general on the court, so Wendy wants to talk with her. Now, Singa with it. Needs some help. Boy, Tennessee putting that pressure on, extending that defense. Turner at the high post. Well, they'll give Turner that shot, won't they? Yeah, all night long. Ashley Robinson will just sit right back on that CAA mark. Shot clock down to seven. 
Nasinga forced it, missed it. Oh, Cooper Cooper it alive. That's a rejection by Tennessee. Now they want to run two on one. But it's all the way to the hoop. Oh, got the roll. Good and defense. That's the basket. Oh, they're going to wave it off. Offensive yeah. foul. Yeah, offensive foul. That's a great job by Grant. I mean, hit, whoa, nice, nice, nice touch by Robinson. Buck comes all the way down. Buck gets a jump right there. What Buck did to do, jump, stop, and take the shot. What she does, she goes up. Watch her right foot. Her right foot goes right into Grant. Yeah, great defense by time. Grant. That's right. Hold your position and take the charge. You got to love that. Pat Summit wanted her to give that ball up to the player she had on the... The left side on that pass. Or jump stop. Or jump stop and take the take a shot. Now Tennessee extends the pressure defensively. Howard to Giddens, but it's poked away. Giddens recovers it. Well, to Coker. To, needed to reverse that ball. They went right back into the defense again. Coker in deep. Got oh. the That's her first point of the night. And, and Coker, number 23 from ODU. They need more out of Coker. I mean, she's she's averaging eight points a game. She's a factor. They need her muscle inside. She had a tremendous tournament last year in the postseason for the Colonial Athletic Association. They need that performance out of her tonight. Yeah, and she's, she, for, for, for a big woman of her size, she's so quick plays the front on the press. This is Moore. Back to Lawson. Shot clock to two. Boy, I lost it. I tell you what, if Lawson not lighting it up today, you know, Lawson didn't have the greatest game against Connecticut. Yes, she scored. She scored 13 points, but she was only one for seven from beyond the arc, and you know she wasn't happy with that. Coker tries to answer for the Lady Monarchs, who find themselves down by 16 points. Oh, Turner. what a great move by Turner, pinning her woman, stepping back with her left, and hitting the glass. Excellent move. And that's what they need when Turner's in the game. When Turner's in the game, they need to go to her inside. Lawson again. She leads all scores with 14. Robinson's turnaround, good. And that's what's so tough about Robinson because number 33 from Tennessee, she could step out and she'll force Howard Turner, Turner away from the basket. Missed it, but Lady Monarchs are going to get it back. You gotta be careful. You cannot give that ball to Turner. Ashley Robinson's right hand was in the passing lane. Not a good pass. Lawson played by Nasinga. Robinson. See, that's tough a tough. Shot. That's where the matchup. That's where Karina Turner matching up against Ashley Robinson is going to be very, very difficult because Robinson has range. She'll step right outside and she'll force Karina Turner to come out and to play her. We talked earlier about Tennessee, such a good three-point shooting team. They came in shooting 43% from beyond the arc. So far tonight, not very good, only three for 11, but they have hit two three-pointers here in the second half. Well, and, and you got you got to give a lot of credit to the defense of Old Dominion. You know, right right now today, today they're only three for 11. Now, this is a team, John, that averaged three made three-point shots a game last year. They upped it to six this year. They're running a new offense that's creating more opportunities for their players. And when you have six players that can shoot the three, by golly, you know, uh, create something. And Pat Summit has gone to a spread offense, which has just done that. But give OGU a lot of credit for the... Uh, uh, pressure on Tennessee. Tennessee four out of five from the field this half. Old Dominion just two for six as Nasinga spins in the paint. And an unfriendly roll. It'll be Old Dominion basketball. But first, a timeout on the floor. Tennessee pulling away up by 18. We're back after this. Welcome back. Tennessee up by 18 points. Earlier tonight, I talked to head coach Wendy Larry about her ball club's ability to stay with a team like Tennessee. And we have to be really clicking on all cylinders to make it happen here tonight. We're, we're tremendously improved from four weeks ago, but we're still a very young basketball team that's taken little steps. And if we just improve a little bit more than we did against Wilmington, I'll be very, very pleased. 
It'll be Old Dominion basketball, Kathy. They've improved. They played fairly well, but Tennessee is awfully good. Yeah, you know, ten Tennessee is, is looking to make their 14th Final Four appearance. And when you look at this this kind of talent and and the way they run their systems, uh, their poise, their ability oh, to do so many different things. You know, we talk about offensively how good they are. Defensively, they hold their opponent to 52 points a game. I mean, this is a very, very good defensive team. Inside, McSherry with the score. McSherry, McSherry saw Ashley Robinson standing up and took advantage of that by going left. Akeisha Howard broke up what probably was going to be an easy score for Tennessee. She always talking to her team, always the director on the court, trying to move around traffic. Inside shot, uh, no good. Brittany got fouled, though, the second time around. She just stuck with it. But she stuck with it, went up for a second offensive rebound, and that's where Tennessee is so strong on the offensive glass. You know, that's, a, that's one thing that, that Pat Summit really instilled in her players. It's all about pride. You can see Pat right there, you know, always, always talking to her players, always teaching, always teaching. You know, great teacher she is, but, but when it comes to offensive rebounds, it's all about passion and gust. And you got to want it. you got to want it. Uh, and that's a very prideful thing at Tennessee. Jackson missed the first as Mariah Spence and Alana Davis return for Old Dominion. And that's unusual for Jackson. Brittany Jackson is an 85% free throw shooter. Tennessee is a team 70%, which is certainly respectable. She hits one out of two that trip. Old Dominion, Tennessee in a full court pressure. Gwen Jackson at the point, and there is Moore with the, the steal. Of uh, Inside, Gwen Jackson scores. You gotta love that. Six. One, two, one, one, full court press. 19 point lead, biggest of the game. So well, that's the way you break it, in the gap. Mashiri almost lost it. Now she does lose it off of her leg, Lady Vols ball. Well, and the Lady Vols go right after you as Lori Moore did right there. Turnover is a big issue. They've scored 12 points off of the Old Dominion turnovers tonight. Yeah, they don't just, they don't just force you with a turnover, they create points. And that, that's the key to, to a very good ball club. Jackson and the wow. Robinson. What a big move. What a big, big move. Robinson with 10 points, six here in the second half in the lead 21. Tennessee to play to play defense. Mariah Spence. And this is Kim Giddens. But Tennessee putting so much pressure on ODU, not getting any openings in stop. But that's the second time. That is the second time on that play. Mashiri down the lane Mishiri again. Was able to get that left hand shot. Left hand drive right to the hoop. Foul against Old Dominion. A couple of free throws coming up for Jackson. Mariah Spence charged with the personal, her first. You know, Brittany Jackson, uh, as we said earlier, has just started playing again, sustained that uh, tier of the medial flower movement. Came off a tremendous season last year, started in all five NCAA tournament games. And she gives him a whole new dimension, you know, from the perimeter. Mashiri out for Old Dominion. Monique Coker back in the Lady Monarchs lineup as Jackson connects twice. She's got seven points. And now more of that full court press by the Lady Vol. So a good way to break it, get it up to Spence right in the middle. Coker with a nice ah. feed inside to Davis. That's three times in a row that tennis set, that Old Dominion got a shot on the left-hand side of the basket. Two times with Mushery and then with Davis. Still a 19-point lead. Lady Monarchs need some stops now. They cannot afford to trade baskets with this Tennessee team. And there's a lot of time on the clock. There's a lot of time on the clock. Gwen Jackson inside again for Tennessee. Well, this is where Old Dominion needs to really look to crash the boards, get on there for second opportunities like right
right here. You gotta know. See, that's where Coker's underneath there, but Robinson's so big. This cat was right over there. Moore's pull up jumper. No good, but Robinson got the strong rebound. She went from wire to wire. But she stepped on the baseline. It'll be Old Dominion basketball as Karina Turner returns for the Lady Monarchs. Gonna stop. Look at Ashley Robinson. Right to the boards, offensive rebound. They back off the zone press. Davis into Spence, off her hand, recovered you know, Spence by had, Moore. Spence had a good look. You know, she needs to hold on to that ball. Lawson, the game high, 16 points. Now Akeisha Howard threads through the defense. Spence misfires. Tennessee ball. Well, Old Dominion not hitting the offensive zone, not getting into position. And once again, Tennessee, all orange jerseys on that defensive glass. Zolman, the shooter, back in the ball game for the Lady Vols. Cocavina back on for Old Dominion. I think I think Elmo could say, Elmo could say John when they come back here is that you don't have to say the shooters. They're all the yeah. shooters, aren't they? That's right. Very talented bunch. But now you got even a bigger shooter. That's the Tennessee puts their big three-point guns outside with Brittany Jackson and Zolman. Win Jackson. Ben. Trying to go one-on-one on Koga. Koga stops him. Zolman got fouled from behind. Kokovina, I believe, guilty of the personal foul. What happens on that play is number five, number five Zolman on the left-hand side catches, catches Spence out there and does not allow her to, uh, to stop her. Goes right to the hoop. Zolman scores her first point of the night. Now every Tennessee player scores. The lead up to 25. And now well, you know, this is why you play these games. You play these kinds of games because your team is young, old Dominion, losing four stars from last year. When Jackson got the steal, missed the shot, and was standing out of bounds whenever the rebound came well, to her. And you learn from these kinds of games. Tennessee, pull it away. Up by 25. Tennessee very much in charge here over Old Dominion. And Kathy, you take a look at the strength of schedule. You know, Tennessee, they, they play such a difficult schedule. Number one schedule in the country, but you know, it's planned this way because in order to be the best, you got to play the best all the time. And, and they always have to have their A game. But it's like I said, they're always looking uh, for the final four. But you know, from December 4th to today, Tennessee schedule seven, seven former NCAA and AIW combined champions. That's who they played before this game today. Of course, Old Dominion being the, uh, the seventh. And their upcoming schedule is their SEC schedule, and it's absolutely, uh, absolutely brutal. But they get into Southeastern Conference play for the most part. Is a foul going against Old Dominion? Gwen Jackson's going to shoot a couple of shots. Yeah, and you know, it's it's it, uh, their, their SEC schedule is strong enough to begin with, Auburn, you know, and of course, uh, those are the four, the four of having a, a great year, uh, Alabama, Florida, and South Carolina. I mean, this is, um, this is preparation to be a champion. This is about, all about being a champion. It's a championship uh, program from top to bottom. Jackson hits the first. You know, and Tennessee is coming off a tough heartbreaker against right. you know, Connecticut. At, at Connecticut. At Connecticut. They lose in overtime, and so what a performance by Tarasi for Connecticut on oh, yeah. Saturday. Well, that, that was, that game was Tarasi. Yeah. That game was, Tar Tarasi took that game in her hand. There's no question about that. 27-point lead. But when you look at Old Dominion, you look at their young talent. Therese Grant here. Therese Grant right here, number 24, sophomore. And what she's going to mean to the club next year. 
And that's why, you know, you play teams like Tennessee have put Old Dominion and, and, you know, Tennessee have had this position for 25 years. But that's why you play teams like this, to put your young ball club uh, as you get ready. And when you look at Old Dominion, John, I'm not, I, I would be surprised with a 4 and 4 record to see Old Dominion in the NCAAs. As a matter of fact, oh, I think that's there. There's, no, there's no question about that. I mean, uh, they still have a, a, a really tough upcoming schedule coming themselves. They still have Penn State to play and Rutgers to play also. Uh, but when you play a team like Tennessee and, and you have to fight through offense and defense, you learn a great deal. Jackson in deep. A travel. And, you know, we were talking about the, the obvious strength of the Tennessee schedule. Well, if you look at Old Dominion's losses, they, they start the season one and three, but they lost to Virginia, Duke, and Arkansas. And let me tell you what, that Duke ball club, that's a good ball club. Neil Jackson Force has done a great job in building Duke into a national power. And, and this is not a one-time thing. She's had a, Neil Jackson Force and Duke had a great, great recruiting class also. You take a look at the Lady Monarchs' upcoming schedule. Of course, the other loss they suffered was against North Carolina. North Carolina was another another excellent kid from the ACC. They got Drexel, George Mason, uh, James Madison, Townsend, and then Penn State. Penn State, another top 25 team. What you don't see on there is Rutgers, who has improved significantly this year uh, with the new point guard, Point Dexter, uh, who set out last year as a red shirt freshman. So. Uh, they have a, you know, a tough road ahead, and uh, but it's all in preparation. This is all in preparation for their, their CAA schedule and for the NCAA. Right. I mean, Wendy also indicated before the game that it was important to her that her ball club be playing its best when Mark throws around as they throw it away on that fast break opportunity. The lead always 25. Cheering, and, and Wendy's always cheering her team on the side. Cheering and yelling. Cheering and yelling. Coaching, right? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what coaching is? Cheering and yelling. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You just hope to be doing more cheering than yelling. But you got to admire this Tennessee Bull Club. you got to admire, admire them top to bottom. Top to bottom. Their strength, both offensively and defensively. Inside. McDaniel got it back. McDaniel, two offensive rebounds. Pat Summit has to be extremely pleased by that because earlier today when I was talking with her, she said, we got, we, we got to hit the offensive board. There you see McDaniel going after the shot, going after her shot, going up again, going up again. Uh, when Tennessee players review that tape with Pat Summit sitting there, I'm going to tell you what, Corey McDaniel is going to be She's going to get some accolades from her coach for that. Another foul inside against Miss Singa for Old Dominion. Her second. And Kathy, we, we talk about the, the two programs and how successful they've been. But to me, one of the important, important factors, is, as you well know as a coach, is the continuity among the staff. I mean, Pat Summit has had a couple of coaches that have been with her 18 years apiece. Nikki DeMoss, there you see Pat to her right is Holly Wallace, who played for her at Tennessee, one of the great point guards. Uh, and then to her, to her left would be Nikki DeMoss. And another former player, Nikki Caldwell, is also uh, on the coaching staff. Yeah, no question about that. Continuity is very, very important. Twenty-seven point lead. I believe that's the biggest of the game. The best twenty-seven before is a future Howard in. Uh, nice effort by by Howard, but you know Howard goes up there. Little five, six Howard, and towering over is number fifty, Fluka. All all six five. <laughs> 5-5 five, five and 6-5, but no back down whatsoever in a That's future right. hour. This is Coker, who's been relatively quiet tonight. Very quiet, very quiet tonight. That you know, time she just threw it up to get to the line. Absolutely, and that's her game. That's Coker's game, number 23 on top of your screen. Her game is drive penetration. Drive penetration. 
And Tennessee did a great job in, in ice and hearts this evening. Pat Summit uses one of her 30-second timeouts. Do you think she saw, saw things getting a little sloppy there on the defensive end? Yeah, probably, because, you know, when you, when you look at a game like this, you're Pat Summit. 68-41, what you want to do is that you want to maximize every opportunity. You want to, you want to be able to utilize your plays. You want to run some plays. You want to make some things happen. You know, it's not just about winning the ball game. It's playing the game the right way. And these and these games are important both for ODU and, and for Tennessee. And execution and taking every, every single possession and maximizing it. So Pat Summit's not going to be satisfied in walking out of here with a win. It's, it's also how you win the game. And she has the opportunity to, to work on a number of different lineups here, which is so key. Right. Coker misses the first. She has only two points tonight. She averages just under nine for the year to go with nine rebounds. She's well below both those numbers. Oh, she misses again. Sherry with the rebound. Big rebound. Boy, Sherry can get up there, can't she? Very athletic. She has oh, some okay. jumps. And when you look at this uh, Old Dominion team, and you look at their, their future, and their youth, and their inexperience, I mean, I, I forget about next year. I look at the end of this year. You know, a couple of games down, th this team, I've seen them at the beginning of the season, they're just getting better and better. And you, know, you take it back to a year ago, you never would have thought that this basketball team could make it to the Elite Eight based on what they were doing in January, but that's exactly what they did. Well, they had a tremendous run. That's because Wendy Larry is a, an outstanding teacher. Now, I want to give you a stat from, from Old Dominion from, from, from last year. You know, la last year, they gave up 77 points, scored 75, gave up 77 points, weren't a really good defensive team. This is the year they were a good defensive team. Of course, you don't see it really, you know, tonight, but that's unfair. They're holding their opponents to only 61 points a game. The problem is, offensively, they're only scoring 54 points. Right. So they're missing 10 points from, from last year. And that's the problem. They don't, have, they don't have the shooters that they can go to consistently. Latoya Davis with the baseline jumper and a chance for a three-point play. It's a nice move by Davis. And here's a gal, number four, Davis, Luana, Luana, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Latoya Davis from Tennessee, who doesn't, who's played 12 games, but only plays around five minutes a game, five minutes a game, five minutes a game, so it gives her an opportunity to get in here and get some time. 30-point advantage for the Lady Vols. Old Dominion has scored only... 14 points in the second half. They were down by a dozen at the break as the pull-up jumper short by Grant. But the follow-up good by Coker. Only her second field goal, though. A kicking violation will keep it with Tennessee as they reset the shot clock. But both teams working hard. Both coaches working different plays, looking at different things. McDaniel Boy. got it back. Foul against Old Dominion. Kim Giddens gets charged with her third. How about, how about that strength from McDaniel? On your screen, number 34 in orange. Boy, is she tough on the offensive boards? Elbows. Yeah, a little elbows galore there. there. But, you know, the mistake was really on the, the defense on the inbounds pass. You can't give that pass up off Take that position. Up. Daniel hits the first. She's got three points. Tennessee doing a great job hitting the boards in the second half. And, you know, McDan McDaniel is a big offensive rebounder, huge offensive rebounder. Tennessee had hit 11 straight free throws. Shooters. Phil Stanton, our stats man, hands me that. She misses. The jumper oh. by Grant off the mark. Hits yeah. with the rebound, but lost it. Hit the bottom of the backboard. It'll stay with Old Dominion. So Tennessee not giving Old Dominion good looks at the basket at all. 
Nothing easy out there. Lady Vols by 29 when we come back. Lady Vols came ready to play tonight. Not that they weren't ready to play on Saturday, but Kathy, I've got to believe that after losing that heartbreaker in overtime at UConn, they had a chance to end that long winning streak. They come out with a vengeance here, especially in the second half. Yeah, you know, and, and Saturday's game was more than, than breaking, you know, a, a, a big streak by, by Connecticut. There's a lot of pride on, on the line. And, and uh, you know, talking with Pat Summer today, they weren't, they knew they had them, uh, and it, it was one of those heartbreaking losses. But, you know, they're, they're competitive. They come out every single game. But if you talk about their schedule earlier, John, Every time a team plays Tennessee, it's like one of the biggest games of the season, of the, of the year. You know, it's like, it's that, that big game. So they have to be up on every single game. And of course, this game is a, is a, is a big game for them, not only, you know, for the tradition, but, you know, Old Dominion has always been a tough you know, opponent for them. Otisha Howard, guarded by Zolman. But Tennessee's not backing down. You know, aggressive, aggressive defense. Coker's coming alive in the second half here. Coker's third three-point field goal of the season. She's got seven points in the game, all here in the second half, and now she makes a nice defensive play. Good hands in the passing lane. Machery will shoot a couple of shots after the foul. Queen Machery, once you give, when you, once you give her a little. Daylight on the left-hand side. I mean, she is a lefty, but she's she's not going to stop at all. Did a nice overplay there. Coker got her hand on it. And Mashiri, the speed on Mashiri, driving it. You got to love the way she protects the ball. You see the way she protects the ball. Use her body against the player and shout with the left hand. The first free throw, good. She's got seven points. Only a sophomore. Played on the Portugal Junior National Team. Played with Matt, Matt also, Nacingo, on the club team. See, that's what happens. When he goes overseas, sees Max the single play, and then all of a sudden says, who's this gal? With Sherry. <laughs> See, we got, got a scholarship for her as well. You got to love that. McDaniel a long way from the bucket. The lead 24, Fluka walk with it. I see that's dangerous. Number 50, 6'5, Fluka, you know, putting the ball on the floor, wanting to go one on one. The talented athletes on this Tennessee team. And once again, only a freshman. The senior, Howard. Who's scoreless here in the second half. She had 10 points, including Old Dominion's first four. And there she breaks that. She brought some good luck there. 12 for the game. Inside of McDaniel again, and she'll go back to the line. Well, you know, you got, you got, you got, you got to recognize McDaniel, but first down the other end, Howard. Howard has such good oh, ball control. She sees that little bit, a little bit of hesitation. She did this in the first half so effectively. Of course, Tennessee denied it in the second half, but boom, right to the basket. Old Dominion needs to recognize McDaniel. McDaniel's been having a feast. Number 34 taking the foul shot right now for Tennessee. She's been having a feast on the low post. Coker out. Corinna Turner back on for the Lady Monarchs. Also, Kim Giddens sits down as Mariah Spence checks back in for Wendy Larry's ball flow. Spence with the rebound. Howard with a two-on-three break. Forced it, but drew the foul. Well, drew the foul. Had Davis on her side, running with her. Knew that she can get fouled on that smart play by Howard. Oh, yeah, Any time that you you come down the lane and you see your your defender running by your side, moving their feet, going with you, you need to take it to the hoop and you get that foul. Because she was in position, there was no way that Davis was going to block that shot. She was going to foul her. And when you're an 84% free throw shooter, it's like money in the bank. You know, she, uh, Howard, she stand, she, they say she's 5'5", five five, but if she's 5'5", five five, that she gets so much out of 
to the side for what she does. Nearly a steal. Zolman recovered. Davis almost lost it. Zolman there again to bail her out. Shot clock to eight. And now finally Howard does make the steal. Hesitates, lost it. Spence to Turner. Oh. What a wild sequence that was. I think Howard has Davis's number. They may be down by a bunch of points, but they're not quitting. I uh, never give up. Never, ever give up. You know, Howard, quick hands by Howard. Davis shows the ball. Howard goes all the way. Loses control over it. And then Grant. Grant just tried to get fouled. Didn't she on that? She had nowhere to go. She got the ball. Just went right up. Old Dominion actually on an 11-2 run in the last two minutes and 20 seconds. So it was a 30-point advantage. They're trying to make it a little more respectable. Never stop. Never stop trying. Never stop playing hard. Turner gets one out of two. She's got five points tonight. 20-point lead. Tennessee players too much fight for the ball. Mascheri inside. Got it blocked, but a foul going to be called the fluker. And the crowd loves it. And the crowd loves it because they know their team, Old Dominion, has not given up. Has not given up. Well, they've shaved the third off the lead. A couple more free throws, but Mascheri has not been that good from the line tonight. Came in as a 60% shooter. You know, when you get to games like this, it's all about respect. It's all about respect. And ironically, Pat Summit decides to put Lawson back in the ball game as well as Ashley Robinson. So maybe she's trying to gain back some of the respect she had when she has a 30-point lead. Well, and also what happens, you don't want your team to get out of control. Uh, you get the crowd in the game, get out of control. You, you don't want that too. So she puts her leadership back in, puts Carol Lawson back in. Says, okay, let's get, the, let's, get this, let's get this back in order. Let's settle this down. Lawson some offense. with the ball in 16 points, 11 in the first half. Inside to Robinson. The basket will count. Ashley Robinson is so tough down low. Her, her back to the basket move. Watch when, she, watch when she gets the ball, her dominance inside. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll pass by, by Kara earlier today. You know, she knows timing, all about timing. She can step back, you know, step back, take the shot, go to the top of the key, fake, can drive, can pop it out there. She's a total player. And now she has 13 points. Nine here in the second half. The lead back to 23. Grant stepped on the baseline. Turnover gives it back to the Lady Vols. And you see they are running, running their sets again. Yep. Zolman cut yeah. in. Well, a little change of defense by Old Dominion. I think it's uh, Court Tennessee off guard. Old Dominion still down in the turnover battle. Lawson out on Howard. Tennessee not giving Old Dominion main look. Another move to the hole by the 5-5 five, five Howard will draw a couple of free throws. Well, you know, because at that point, oh, Howard, wasn't get, Howard wasn't getting any picks for outside moves. She sees, she sees, watching Lawson, she sees that gap. She saw a gap, and she attacked the gap. That's four fouls on Davis. See the gap? And then she explodes through the gap. Tennessee needs to drop, needs to help. And there's Davis, number four from Tennessee, saying, hey, What's, uh, what I do? He fell. <laughs> Has there ever been a player admit that they committed a personal foul? Gordon McDaniel, who's the 
Howard now with 15 points to lead the Old Dominion. Twenty-nine years and still going strong for Pat Summit at Tennessee. Twenty-nine years, six national championships, three final, thirteen final four appearances. It's amazing how many wins she's going to rack up before it's over with. She's still a young woman. Absolutely. Howard with the score. Boy, Howard taking it to another level, another notch. Inspiring her team, and that's what that's what leaders do. Now Lawson for three. Oh, oh, was that a tough loss? That was a tough three-point shot. Grant was right there. I mean, she stepped right back. Lawson with 19. She averages just a shade under 14. Inside the spin. Robinson with the rebound. Numbers for Tennessee, but they throw it away. It's a strong pass by Robinson to Davis. So Tennessee very much in charge here. Trying to get his 10th victory of the season. on Comcast Sportsnet has been brought to you by Kroger and by Chrysler and by Coca-Cola. I think Tennessee, when they came out early in the second half, uh, they just seemed to be much more in focus. They had a purpose the first five minutes of the second half, and that's really when they seemed to control the basketball game. Well, coaches like to do that when they come out uh, from halftime, they want to control those first five minutes of play. They, they feel like that could dictate that dictates a great part of that of that second half and the momentum that you uh, gain on your opponent. Coker for her second three of the night. This one's off the mark, but the rebound by Giddens creates the easy score. Yeah. And, and, and Old Dominion not giving up by no stretch of the imagination, just continuing to pound away at uh, Tennessee. Zolman has it. He hadn't hit a field goal tonight. A couple of free throws, that's been it. Now foul away from the ball against Tennessee. Are they are they pulling it on, on the Daniel off the ball? Yes, they are. Yeah. Just over three minutes to play. Tennessee led by 12 at the half. It's been as much as a 30-point advantage for the Lady Vols. Right now, it's 21. And for Tennessee, this gives Pat Summit an opportunity to play a young lineup and put them out here and give them an opportunity to Jackson, work on some things. Jackson with the rebound. Down the lane. Up and in. Boy, that was a pretty move. That was a pretty move by Jackson. She's got nine points. Just great balance, led by Lawson's 19 points. And Robinson's got 13. Gwen Jackson also in double figures. Spence well off the mark. Goldman oh, to so Jackson, and she joins double digits. Tennessee, no matter what lineup is in, has been in here tonight, John, they, they, they do a great job of looking on the court, their transition offense. As soon as the, as soon as the, the rebound gets the ball, kicks it out, they look up immediately, and there's someone running down the, the lane, running down the floor. Therese Grant finally decides to shoot. Short. Jackson, another board for the Lady Vols. And once again, an easy go. score. They're just beating everybody down the floor now. Well, their, transi their transition oh, offense. And Wendy Larry is not happy at all. You know, get beat once get beat twice. You, you need to recognize that. You need to you need to get back there and defend. And that, that goes two things. Is that when the when you, the defender gets the ball, uh, you got the pressure on you. You can't let them make the kind of outward passes that OG is letting Tennessee uh, do. Let's take a look at the AP poll, the top ten, and just see where Tennessee fits in the mix. They'll be ten and four in a couple of minutes. 
Well, Tennessee didn't move uh, when they lost to UConn on Saturday. They didn't move out of that that number five spot. I tell you what, when you look when you look at number two LSU, boy, they were on television the other day. Another SEC opponent that that woman, Pat Summon and her team and her staff is going to have to go against. I tell you what, LSU. Sue Gunter has done an unbelievable job down at LSU, and what athletes do they have? That's going to be a match. Tennessee and LSU down the road. Of course, you see Arkansas was number nine, so that's three of the top ten from the Southeastern Conference. And Old Dominion played Arkansas at the Paradise Jam earlier during the Thanksgiving uh, holiday. Jennings connects on the spin move. She's got eight points. And the score inside for Fluker. They are so beautiful when they run down the court and they run that transition and they run the lane and their big woman post up after the ball. Nasinga down the lane, rejected oh. by Fluka. And she like that. I tell you what. And here's all 6-5 again from Nasinga. Impressive move there. Big block kept their body, kept her body away from her because she's all arms and she's got some long arms. Fluka does. Oh, another block, block by Davis. Up the floor to Jackson and once again, nobody home. That outward pass. That outward pass has been a killer in the last few minutes. 13 points for Jackson, nine here in the second half and six in the last two minutes. Coker's shot won't go. Outward pass again. Oh, my. This and they're sending the release. They send that release girl down from the opposite side. 31 points. That's the biggest lead of the night. They don't appear to be in any hurry to do much of anything right now except for Howard, who hit the three. And that was an NBA three. And that's her 20th point of the night. Second three-point field goal as Zolman misses again. 91-63, Kathy. You saw two good basketball teams, but obviously a much more talented team in Tennessee. Well, that's why Tennessee is number five in the country. I mean, this is a, an experienced team. I mean, this is a team that has a lot of guns. Uh, they showed it tonight. But when you look at Old Dominion, Bright future, great upside, young, athletic, and can't wait to see them throughout the rest of the season. Can Tennessee contend for a national championship? Absolutely. No question about it. They'll be there in the final four. Kathy, enjoyed working with you. Same here, John. For Kathy Andrews, I'm John Castleberry. Once again, our final score, Tennessee 91, Old Dominion 63. The following has been a presentation of Comcast Sportsnet. University of Tennessee. Go. As soon as you hear that whistle, you know somebody in here is going to put on the show and go, this is my court, my ball, my show. Any moves like you just don't spend. Yeah, you know this is CBS Sports, spectacular A-Yo. Everybody throw your hands in the air. Uh -huh. We here forever, ever. We don't go never. CBS Sports Spectacular presents Pride, Passion, and Power. The Hartford Civic Center was the scene of the latest chapter in the premier passion play in women's basketball. UConn pushed its winning streak to 51. And if you have been sweeter